Good evening, everybody. I am Jessica Behrens, one of the leaders for the Classic Charms Southern Charms team, and I am doing tonight's tips from the top. So tonight we are going to feature uh, pop-up shops. So I am a stylist in New York City. I've lived here for five five years and pop-up shops are something that I rely heavily on in my business to make new connections and meet new people. So I thought I would give the rundown to all of you that have either just started a stylist with Style and Dot or maybe need to expand your customer list for whatever reason. So with that being said, let's dive right in. So first and foremost, uh, definition of a trunk show. So, or definition of a pop-up shop. It is basically like a, a trunk show on steroids. So if you think about it, a trunk show itself is normally about two hours. A pop-up shop is gonna be much longer. And instead of having a private location where only the hostess is able to invite a select number of people to come, um, you are gonna have it open to the public. So that's really the only difference of a pop-up shop versus a trunk show. Um, with that being said, pop-up shops should really be in addition to your trunk show schedule. You are using these pop-ups to make contacts, to build brand awareness in your community and in your neighborhood, um, to really hone you in as the Stella and Dot stylist that everyone thinks of when they are in this particular area. So that is the point of these. It's to make contacts, to meet new people, to book trunk shows, to you know, meet potential stylists for your team. So sales are really a bonus. Um, so at the end of the day, you should always shoot to book a show and a pop-up is just maybe something that you might have time for every month to do a few of. Um, you will treat the pop-up shop like a trunk show. So you will have a hostess, you will hostess coach, you will go through all of the motions that you normally do with a trunk show. It's just that we're going to have some slight differentials that I'll go through in a minute. So first and foremost, you have to kind of think about when you, when you're thinking about a pop-up shop, you know, you've made the decision that you need to expand your network and you're super excited about it. So where do you start? So you create as when you are doing a booking or sponsoring blitz, you create a who do you know list, but think of places that you think would be great to pop up at. So a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, so businesses that you shop at or that you go to. So think of your bar studio, your gym, the place you get your hair done, the place that you get your nails done, um, an amazing boutique that you shop at. Those are the places that should pop to mind at first because you go there and you like Stella and Dot and probably everyone else that goes there would love Stella and Dot. So that's, that's a good way to start. Um, be strategic. So you could also think about a place that you've never shopped before. Um, we'll go through some words to say on how to, to bridge that gap, but don't be confined to just the places that you go. You can start there, but then also think of maybe boutiques that you've always wanted to go to, but you never have, or, you know, a workout place that you don't maybe box, but you would love to box if, if you decided to go and do that. Um, also think about a business that would align with Style and Dot. So think about our mission, think about our brand and how we portray ourselves to our customers and how our stylists kind of function and align with a business that's like that. So a similar boutique that has a similar style to us. Um, maybe it's a, a brand that their mission aligns with ours. For instance, I'm going to talk about like the opposite of that. So like you would not pop up at like a hardware store. Like that doesn't make any sense. If Stella and Dot was at a hardware store, I mean, and maybe, maybe someone somewhere has done a pop up at a hardware store and it was amazing, but think about something, some place that would align with our brand and who we are as a stylist. Um, think about some like strategic things as well. Like where are a high volume of women? Um, like I mentioned, this is going to be a public open space. So the more people that come through and the more people that you meet, the more beneficial it will be. So think of a place where women are constantly coming in and out of, um, that they have disposable income. I'm not going to like pigeonhole that and say that's a necessity, but if it's something where, you know, someone has paid $40 to be at a bar studio, um, they probably are in the market for some jewelry and we're probably the price point that they're looking for. So be strategic when you think about that as well. Um, if you're running into a wall, making your who do you know list, Google is your BFF. 
um, literally typing in, like go to Google Maps and type in like hair salons and see what hair salons pop up in your area. Um, same goes for, you know, certain workout studios or, you know, certain boutiques that you would like to pinpoint. Um, also, Facebook and social media are great uh, tools for this as well. So would it, it's not a, a weird thing for you to say, you know, I'm looking to expand my network. I'm looking to, a, to do a couple cool pop-up shops this month. Uh, who lives in New York City, speaking specifically, like who lives in New York City that has an awesome boutique that they, um, that they love? Or just posting like a blanket statement like that. You don't even have to mention anything about pop-ups, but just saying, I'm looking for a new workout uh, routine. Who has a really cool studio that they love? And just even putting it out there like that, not even mentioning style and that. So that's the first, the first um, like point is to make a who do you know list and really pinpoint who you you want to go after. Um, after that, you have to kind of like reel back and check yourself a bit. When you walk into a a strange place where you have no connection, maybe you maybe you go there for a haircut, maybe you don't, maybe you go there for working out, maybe you don't. You have to be confident that what you are bringing to the table for this business is something that they want and they should feel lucky that you found them and decided that you want to work with them. So you have to come from a place of confidence and a place of service. So you are bringing a free, awesome attraction to their business and they should be like bending over backwards to like make this work for you. So make sure that you're coming in there not like, oh, I was really hoping like I would be able to do a pop up here. No, you come in and you say, I'm a stylist. I'm in the area. I love your brand. I think it would be so great to work together. Um, I think our brands really align and I would love to come and pop up here with my business for free to help, um, make a, like a fun new attraction for, for your business or for your customers. However, and again, we'll go through words to say in a bit on, on that, but just like a side point, remember that you should feel confident that what you're bringing to the table is worth it and that they want you there. Um, you chose them at the end of the day. So just a couple tips off the bat, go in person. Um, similar to picking up the phone to book a trunk show. If you go in person and you make that initial connection, that business owner is going to trust you because you're professional. Um, you thought it important enough to go there in person and they can get a good vibe from you off the get go. So they're going to be more willing to book with you when they make eye contact with you, when they hear your voice, when they see your face and they just will get more comfortable right off, right off the bat with that. Um, go in professionally, you know, wash your hair that day, <laughs> wear some Stella dot, bring catalogs with you to be able to leave with them to kind of look through if they're unfamiliar with the brand. Um, I wouldn't go as far as say, as bring a, like a hostess packet quite yet. Um, once you start coaching them, like leading up to the event, that's when you can give a hostess packet. Maybe if you want to bring a folder again with uh, like a hostess rewards uh, printout, a couple catalogs. I know a couple stylists have done these one pager, my story printouts, which are really helpful. Um, anything that you can leave there, especially if the person that you want to speak to isn't in person, it's always, isn't there in person that day. It's always great to be able to leave something with them to then be able to follow up on. Um, keep it super simple, similar to a booking conversation you would have. You don't want to overload them with all the logistics as they're booking. They need to know it's free. They need to know it'll take place for a few hours. Um, you will come with a curated, beautiful boutique setup. Uh, you will be there if people want to purchase, but Stella and Dot isn't sold in stores. So this is just a really great way for people to be able to see the brand in person on a one-off day. And that's really all you need to, to tell them. Um, they might have questions about how it works and when those come, you can answer, but really keep it simple because at the end of the day, they want something easy and they want something cool. So make sure you keep it that way. Um, at the end of the day, they also want to book something that is beneficial for their business. So like I mentioned, Stalin Dot can't be seen in stores. So that's attraction number one. Someone who is familiar with Stalin Dot, if they know that there's a pop-up going on, they will immediately gravitate to this. So you will be 
you know, broadcasting it all over social media, but also you will be broadcasting it to your personal customers, regardless of how big that is. They, you will be broadcasting it to your social media, regardless of how big that is. So they have basically free marketing for their business location because of the pop-up that you are doing with Stalin Doc. So that's number one. Um, number two, like I mentioned, it's free. So a lot of times vendors, if they go into a place, they require a certain level of sales to commit to doing something like this. Um, maybe the location has to pay them a certain amount of money if they're not going to receive sales from this. So the fact that you're coming in free of charge, regardless of the outcome, that's another big benefit for them. Um, it's a different type of event. So let's say they are a boutique. It's a great way for them to email out their current customer base to say, you know, haven't seen you in a while, wanted to invite you to this awesome style and dot pop-up we're doing this weekend. Uh, would love to come, like have you come back in. So having like a blast marketing to send out to current customers, reeling them back in to shop not only with you, but to come back in and shop with them is another huge thing. Um, that can be applied to obviously like gyms and studios and hair places and whatever also. Um, you will set the pop-up up in the name of either the manager that you speak to or the events person that you speak to. So Hostess Rewards will aggregate uh, depending on like sales and follow-up and all that stuff, but Hostess Rewards will be earned. So that is another benefit. So not only are you free coming in, but they will get free product to either spend on themselves or maybe they decide to give it to their employees, however they decide to deal with that. Um, so those are just a couple off the bat benefits of why they would want to book with us. So next, let's dive into logistics. So like I said, pop-ups are just a longer trunk show. So instead of being about two hours, they're going to be anywhere from three to five. Um, because you are relying on people coming in and out, the longer you're there, the better it is. And I, it's like a time suck and it's kind of annoying, but you just have to kind of swallow it and realize that that is just what the nature of a pop-up is. Um, going back to what I mentioned earlier, you want to be in a place where there's a lot of women and there's a lot of traffic. So if you pick something, so for instance, like in New York, everything's on the street. There's tons of foot traffic all the time. If you don't live in a major city, maybe pick a boutique or something that is in some sort of strip mall or does get a lot of traffic. It's not like a standalone building. So that way, if someone happens to be walking by, they do see that you're doing the event and they pop in. Um, hence the name pop-up. Um, or if let's say that you do end up doing it with a place that is kind of off the beaten path, you're going to have to just work really closely with that management to make sure that every single customer knows about it, that you are blasting it all over social media. So that way people will be coming in and out and it's not going to be a waste of your time. Um, work with them about when their busiest days and times are. So for instance, whenever I've done a bar pop up, I always do Saturday mornings. And I never do it right when the first class starts at 8 a.m. Because I personally know if I'm going to an 8 a.m. workout class, I get there right at the last minute. I scoot right in and I go to my class. So no one is going to be shopping ahead of time. Everybody's going to be shopping after their class. And that's when you're going to get them. So be strategic about how you decide what day, how you decide what time. Um, again, uh, back to the bar thing, one of uh, the stylists on my team had a great idea to bring mimosa fixings. So obviously getting um, permission from the space that you're doing this, but if someone comes out of a, a bar class and instead of beelining it to the door to leave, if someone's offering a free mimosa, they're going to make a mimosa and they're going to have it. And if they're standing around, they're probably going to shop and who's there, but you. So getting a couple of cheap bottles of champagne and some orange juice is fairly smart in my book if it makes people stay around a little bit longer. So again, being strategic with your details and how you think things through. Um, it also is really fun to do a theme. So back to the workout classes, doing like sparkle and sweat and theming it that way to blast out to your customers as well as their, their email list. Um, I did a, a blow dry studio, like a dry bar and we did blowouts and bling. So the, the themes just make it fun and like cheeky. So the, the more fun that you make it, the more likely a customer is going to come and make it to the event just because of that. So keep that in mind too. 
Um, back to what I said about blasting it out to your customers. Think about anybody that you've tried to book a trunk show with in, in your area or, you know, has purchased a ton of, of pieces from you, but has never wanted to host themselves or maybe went to a trunk show a couple months ago and, you know, doesn't want to quite host yet. These are the events that you're going to invite those people to because it'll be able to have them in person in front of you and you're going to have like the styling opportunity and then potentially an ability to book a trunk show with them there. But just getting them in the door in front of our pieces is the most important part. So being able to now have a free space that isn't your home to be able to invite all your local customers to is also super beneficial. So that's going to be another benefit for you for doing this. Um, when we think about display, you want it to be curated and like boutique style. So going back to the five tray display that we have kind of turned to is a great, uh, a great go-to. So make sure you guys check that out. Uh, I always get the question about, you know, if something is, is, uh, back ordered, you know, how do I display something? Keep in mind that when people come to a trunk show or to a pop-up, they don't know that you only have, X percent of the line. They don't realize that. They don't know that all the pieces that you have, you've had for the last year. They don't know that you don't have the new March capsule collection coming out or that you don't have a lot of pieces from the January collection that came out. They don't know. So make the display beautiful and everyone will be cool with that. Um, have catalogs there for people to look through and, and take with them, but be confident in your display. What you have is going to be amazing and when you, when you decide on a time and, you know, a date with your management, you're also going to want to discuss where you're going to set up so you can kind of check out the location and make sure that your display fits there accordingly. Um, so if you have a larger space, maybe you do bring more than five trays. Uh, but if you do have a smaller space, then you're not bringing a ton of stuff and it looks super overcrowded. So something to think about when you're discussing um, all of the logistics with the management. Um, also ask if they have a table or tablecloth. A couple times I've forgotten that key uh, detail and have showed up and have had nowhere to set up. So make sure that you have discussed that as well uh, with the management. Um, it's always really fun too to include the staff. So if you are at a boutique dressing up whoever is working there in the style and dot jewelry, um, if they have mannequins, accessorizing the mannequins, you know, with the boutique's clothing and then with style and dot jewelry. Um, if you're setting up at like a, a Lululemon or an Athleta, you know, having a gym mannequin set up and then maybe throwing on the crush it backpack or, you know, an engravable on the mannequin, just, you know, keeping it simple to the whole gym theme. So making it really fun and just making sure that Stalin out is kind of spread all over the place is always just super smart in my opinion. Um, you're going to want to bring some sort of like sign up sheet and uh, like raffle. It's always, again, like the point of this is to get as many contacts as you can. And so if someone's like flittering in and out, they might take a lookbook, but then you may never see them again. So if you have a sign up sheet of, you know, I'd love to put you on my mailing list. I'd love to add you to my customer base and keep you in the know with current collections and, you know, different style trends that are coming out. However you want to phrase it, um, getting that contact information is important. Having a raffle of like a small thing where if someone purchases, they get to enter their name or if someone writes their email down and like gets their name entered that way, uh, doing it for like a poof or a pair of sparkle studs, like something super easy. Uh, you could also do a catered trunk show. So you could do where you would bring a couple bottles of cheap wine, some cupcakes, and they have a style session. So you can always do that, which is always a, a really good one. Um, uh, 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 we gotta speed this up a little bit. So, um, day of, you're going to want to make sure that there is signage everywhere. So again, if they're on the street, you want a sandwich board outside with your, you know, Stalin dot by Jessica Barron's, whatever, whatever it is, you want it on the street and visible. You want to sign when, right when they walk in. So if it's a hair salon, you want a little sign right when they're checking in for their appointment that says pop up today with Stalin dot. You want people to know that that is going on. 
Um, you're also going to want to make sure that you talk to the staff so that they're talking about it. So again, with the checkout person or check-in person, she's going to say, oh, you know, Julia will be right with you to cut your hair. Uh, by the way, you should pop over to our, our style and dot uh, boutique today. You know, our stylist Jessica is going to be here for a couple hours. You should get styled, you know, how, whatever words you want to give to her, but just so all the attention is being directed over to you. Um, it's also kind of fun to, for instance, going, you know, on the hairstylist theme. So if you're doing like a blow dry bar or a hair salon, including the stylists. So, you know, making sure that you're leaving a lookbook at everybody's station. Um, maybe even make it a competition of whoever ends up, their clients end up shopping with you the most. They'll get a, a pair of free sparkle studs or they'll get a free poof just for, you know, obviously referring everybody over to you. Um, if you think about it that way too, the more, the more comfortable you're getting with the staff, even if it ends up that only the staff shop with you that day, and that's the only thing that comes out of your pop-up, that's basically like a little mini trunk show. So like if it's at a hair salon and there's seven stylists and everybody shops with you that day, it's, it's pretty good in my book. And plus you'll get the contact information from everybody that came through and got their hair done that day. So you have to kind of think about depending on where you're popping up, the best way to be strategic about that, if that makes sense. Um, bring paper order forms, Wi-Fi, as we've all experienced at a trunk show. If you haven't, you, you will in the future, but bringing paper forms is always a smart idea. The Wi-Fi is spotty. You don't want to be writing down people's orders on post-it notes, which I have done before. So just a tip. Um, make sure that you're curating social media posts for before the event, during the event, and after the event. Uh, I find that people either overthink and don't end up posting or they post the wrong wording. And it's just easier if you send the blurb, the picture, the time and date that they should post. It just makes everything streamlined and easy for them. Um, if you do do a picture for them, which you should, it's very cool to include not only Stella and Dot's logo, but also their logo. They're going to be more inclined to post something if it includes their, uh, their logo on it. That's just like bottom line. Um, and always layer on an MSD onto the event. Um, even if you are not a star stylist, it is always beneficial to not only post on an Eventbrite platform or something similar about the actual pop-up, but also opening it up to anyone that is interested in learning more about becoming a stylist with Stella and Dot. Um, sometimes people will go onto these event pages and they're not looking to shop. They are looking for a side hustle. So if they know that this is kind of both, then they can come to you and not only see all the product in person, but then they can um, talk to you more about becoming a stylist. Um, and I think that's it in five minutes for questions. So let me unmute. Um, oh, unmute. If anybody has any questions, um, you can. Well, okay. I know that was a lot of information and was kind of all over the place. All right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, no, also, yeah. another question I do get is selling off the table. So, um, one. The funny thing is, I have that, but so my notebook <laughs> is selling off the table. Stop. So, so, one thing, I'm going to meet you guys. Um, so, one thing with selling off the table. So, keep in mind that, like, that's not how our business functions. Everybody, you know, you place the order through you. It gets shipped to them in two or three days. If someone is like, oh my God, I need these earrings for a hot date tonight. I do not want to make her not buy these earrings because she is looking forward to wearing them on this hot date. So there is a way you basically sell off the table to her. You process it as a normal order and then you'll just ship the new piece to you as opposed to shipping it to her. That way she still gets the uh, delight guarantee. She does have to pay the shipping. You can decide to waive that on your own accord if it's something you'd like. Um, but I always call it like a restocking fee. And it's six bucks. I mean, it stinks, but she gets the piece right there. So, um, okay. Oh, it's fine. 
<laughs> so, and there, like, if, if it's something where, you know, you do end up booking a pop-up and you want to go through the logistics of how to sell off the table more, please message me. I can do like a whole very like tactical zoom on that as well. Uh, I'm, you know, okay. Uh, Any other questions? Jessica, yes. Um, what is MSP stand for? I guess oh, it's a long name. No, sorry. So, as um, a star stylist and above, uh, Stalin Dot has these. You know, you're at, like as a leader, you're supposed to host these Meet Stalin Dot events for anyone that is interested in the area about learning more about becoming a stylist. But anyone can host these. It's just like an open information session. We call them MSDs and yeah, that's it. So it meets Stalin Dot, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Um, and I just, I just wanna also mention in the couple of minutes we have left, um, I started Stalin Dot in two brand new cities and pop-ups were like how I got my business rolling. And so I know as a newer stylist, or even if you're a veteran stylist and you just, again, need to revamp your, your customer base and like your who do you know list, pop-ups are a great way to meet people that you would never meet. I mean, I've popped up at, uh, my go-to is actually a blow dry bar down the street from my house. And I mean, the people that I've met in there have become some of my best customers. They were people I would have never, ever met um, because, you know, in my situation, like New York is so large, I just would have never met them in my community regardless. So it is, it is a great way to build your business, 100%. Two more minutes. <laughs> or, or we can end right now. Well, if you guys come up with any other questions, like I said, I'm going to, um, post the recording to Classic Charms, Southern Charms, and to my team page as well. So feel free to, I'm gonna put it on YouTube. So feel free to send it to anybody on your team that may have missed this or any pacing partner, partner you have with Stalin Dot that you think would like to listen and post any questions. You can message me directly on Facebook. Um, and that's it. So thank you for joining. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you. Awesome. All right, all right. Have a great night.